So Dr. Berlin, thank you so much for joining us on the show. It's a pleasure. You know, we're talking about the idea of resilience. We've been highlighting one of the greatest Jews in our history, Rabbi Akiva. And what was so powerful about Rabbi Akiva was he suffered from a cataclysmic event, the, the death of 24,000 students, the loss of the opportunity to reclaim the temple. And yet he had this incredible resilience to then continue on and to rebuild. Now, from what I understand, and share with us a little bit about your practice and your background, you are very familiar with sort of life-changing events. I'm a clinical, licensed clinical psychologist. I, uh, one of my specialties and, and focuses in my training has been on car victims of traumatic car accidents. So talking about people just going on with their regular lives, going on a bike ride with their children or you know, on their way to work and a freak accident happens. Somebody's driving recklessly or somebody for whatever reason loses control of their car and their lives, they get into a traumatic accident and their lives are forever altered. Something life-changing. Talking about people that they themselves are the cause of somebody dying or they are in a vehicle where somebody died or they're just bike, out bike riding and somebody hits them and you know, they're potentially handicapped for the rest of their lives because of somebody driving recklessly. What, a, and, what an incredible uh, moment. And, and, and these are, this is exactly why, and I'm so happy to have you on. We thank you for taking the time to be on with us. This is these moments that, that we're highlighting here. Uh, I'm sure in your practice, you've seen um, different responses. People recover differently. Share with us, if you can, if we can zero in on the trait of resilience. Share with us, if you can, um, if you, you know, people or, or types of people that have been resilient or ways people have been resilient, how does that play into the recovery of this? Sure. It's a, it's a great question because we really get both types. You know, not, not everybody is going to be successful through psychotherapy, psychotherapy and treatment. So what is that, what is that trait that really distinguishes them? I, can I just kind of take a little bit step back in, sure. in one of the treatment approaches that I, that I utilize? When, when we get people that come into the office after one of these accidents, you know, th their lives are typically a complete and total mess. You know, they, they're, they're functioning human beings who now have become full-time patients needing back surgery or injections in their neck or eye issues and just all different types of pain. These are people that, you know, nobody's interested in doing that. They were functioning, productive people, and this is where they are. And a lot of times they're incapable of driving anymore because they're just so scared. They develop travel phobia and they're having nightmares and they're just crying all the time. I mean, we've had people in my office that just come in and just cry. You know, it takes sessions until they're able to tell me like, you know, what happened? You know, what, tell me about the accident, what happened? That's it, you know, they, they cry for, for 40 minutes and I just sit there just feeling that, you know, they're pain for them. There's, there's one of the, um, the initial focus of treatment is really on symptom reduction, you know, helping them with their anxiety, with their depression, with their, with their justified anger that they experience at what has occurred to them. Once, once, and that we take what we call a cognitive behavioral therapy approach. I'm not gonna get too into that. The, the second stage of treatment, once hopefully we do get past the, the symptoms and they're able to drive and they're able to get back into their lives. I, I use something called logotherapy. I don't know if you know the, the history of logotherapy mm -hmm. was it was created by a, um, by a psychiatrist who survived the Holocaust. His name is Viktor Frankl. Um, he wrote a fascinating book called Man's Search for Meaning. He, he himself was a, uh, was a young psych neurologist. He was the, um, the head of a neurology team in Vienna, happily married. And then the Holocaust broke out. And his sister escaped and ran to Australia. And he and his wife and his parents were shipped off to a concentration camp. And he's this person that was at the top of his game. Everything in life was awesome. And here he is suffering, getting beaten, starving. And he's wondering why. How am I going to survive this? And why me? And he came to a point in his realization that I, I have to shift my focus here. I can't keep on being angry about this. I can't keep on asking why. I have to find some meaning in what I'm experiencing. What's going to give me meaning and ultimately help me survive through that meaning? And that's what he did. And his meaning was, was that he wanted to write this book and he wanted to share this experience that people can survive anything, you know, if they have meaning to it, if they, if they have some growth through it. And he ultimately survived the Holocaust. Uh, his wife did not, his parents did not, and he remarried and, and rebuilt a life for himself. So 
we, we get these trauma victims. We have people that were in these terrible, horrific accidents. And then we get past these symptoms and they're focused on the why me? Anger at God, why me? What did I do wrong? How could there be a God if I could experience such a thing? We probably will never have answers to those questions. And it's also not going to help them emotionally. It's not going to help them with their productivities. So we work on, if they're able to, shift their focus from the why me to the how am I going to grow from this? How mm. is this experience going to give me meaning? And, and if, I, if I can share a story with you. Please, please. Um, this is probably, I'm going to share a story with you, which was probably one of the highlights of my career. It, it happened about 10 years ago. It's been a while since I've had something match this one. But I was, I was treating a young man. I'm going to change some of the facts just for confidentiality. But I was, I was treating a young man. Um, he was an immigrant from South America. Really strong work ethic, married to an American. Really, really, you know, everything in his life was great. Very strong work ethic. He's on his way to work, just to kind of give you this guy's work ethic. He's on his way to work at about 6 a.m. as a pedestrian. And there's a uh, group of teenagers on the way back from a party, a night of drinking, and they crashed into him. They crashed into him, left him on the road to die, a hit and run. Here he is, he's lying on the road, totally mangled. Um, I saw him, my, my first session with him, he, he was already uh, having some medical treatment, had in terrible, terrible migraines. Um, he, the way he described it was like a train was just running into his head on a constant basis, backing up, hitting him in the head, a train. He actually, we had to have the lights off in my office and he wore a hooded, a hooded sweatshirt because he couldn't tolerate anything. He couldn't leave his house except for medical treatment. This is a person that was highly productive, really strong work ethic, married, happy, really angry, really depressed. I cannot believe that somebody would leave me out there to die. They don't even care about what happened to me. It's, just, it's, it's a tremendously powerful situation. And he's having his medical treatment. I, I saw him over the course of about 50 sessions. Uh, he had his medical treatment. He had uh, various surgeries. Uh, his headaches, thankfully, were gone by the end of treatment. And he was probably about 90%, medically 90% back to where he was. You know, the, the focus of my treatment, as I described, after we, we kind of worked on the symptoms and him being able to ride a bike again, to be out there again, and not be worried about getting struck by another vehicle, was on how are we growing from this? How am I a different person because of this? And through many, many weeks and a lot of conversation, he became much more devoted to his religion. He, the, the relationship he had is with his wife became so tremendously more powerful. He, he saw himself as a useless human being. You know, he's married to this, um, you know, American professional and he's not able to be a, a good husband to her anymore. He's not a productive person, but she stuck with him. She supported him. She was with him throughout this whole process. And he really, he had, a, he had a daughter from a previous marriage and it really, really um, strengthened and deepened his relationship with her. Really a lot of things that he would have never thought about had he not been in this accident. A lot of things that would have never occurred if he wasn't in this accident in that moment and through treatment and through therapy and being open to it changed. And I have to tell you, I have to tell you that this, this is a crazy moment and it still gives me chills. I'm with him in what we call the, uh, the termination session, the last session I'm having with him. And we're going through how he's progressed and what he's been through and how he's grown. We're, we're repeating over and reviewing, you know, how much he's grown through this experience. And I asked him, I had this crazy question in my head and I just threw it out there. I said, knowing what you know now, even with all the pain you've been through, all the treatments you had to do, all the anger you experienced and all the, all the frustration and the headaches and everything else that was so horrifying and terrible. When we look at the growth you've had, when we look at how far you've come, if you could go back to that day, now you're not gonna believe this, I'm telling you this happened. If you could go back to that day and choose to have this happen to you again because of who you've become as a result, would you do it? Would you wanna be hit by that car? It's, it's a ridiculous question. And we, he looked at me, we kind of stared at each other. I, I kind of was like, oh, you know, did I just like ask some crazy question? He's just gonna, I'm just gonna undo everything we've done. And he said, yes. Wow. I do it again. I wow. do it again. I do it again. You know what? It's worth it. And just the, you know, the, the consolation for him in that moment. I mean, even while I'm telling you to, I'm getting chills in my spine just because I was with him in that pain. I wow. know what he went through. 
he realized there's no other way he would have he would have had this depth in his life. There's nothing mm. else that would have done it. And that mm, was a choice true. he made. It, it was it was a choice he made to be able to go there. You know, it, in these therapy sessions, people really have a choice. And it's very natural to just want to remain angry, want to remain depressed and want to be stuck and justifiably like, you know, I did nothing wrong. We have a reckless driver. I'm now handicapped. Right. And it's unfair for you to ask me how I've grown from this. Some people get frustrated by that and they want they want to stay in their bitterness. It's a choice. It's a choice. I don't judge anybody. You know, I'm not in their shoes and I'm, I'm sure they're experiencing terrible pain. But that's a choice that they make. Amazing. And doctor, thank you so much for joining us today and bringing us this incredible point. Not only the idea of the meaning, but also what you just ended with, which is very powerful, which is the story of Rabbi Akiva and the story of resilience, which is, it's a choice. And that's a very, um, you know, awe inspiring, but also very responsible, responsible feeling of, I have to take responsibility for my own life and choose and how I respond to things. Thank you so much for what you do uh, for our people, for the community, and thank you for shining your light on this world. My pleasure. It was great speaking with you. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. For more content, like and subscribe, and be sure to tune in live every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern at theshabbatshow.com or right here on YouTube.